We're on a family fishing trip with my <laughs> wife and my kid and Jeremy's kid and Adam and we're catching trout. <laughs> Stay tuned for lots of action. Kiss my cheek. Kiss my cheek. Kiss my cheek. I'm not touching that thing. It's my gift. I caught it. Thanks. Your son caught it. Thank you. Here. No thanks. Here you go. Yeah, that's good. It's the lady's job to prepare the meals. Nope. The man catches them. Here you go. Here's the fish. <laughs> and your hands are coming up to pick it up. <laughs> oh! Line down, line down, oh. line down, line down! It's a good one! Whoop! You lost there. it probably. No, I didn't lose it probably. Yeah. No. You didn't lose it. You didn't lose it. Hey! <laughs> nice one. Yeah, that was a good Hello. one. There was a lot of excitement when that one came out, eh? Let's see if this minnow is uh, good for a second, second catch. Hey guys, we're out here uh, in Northern Ontario again. We got the whole family out. We got. Uh, my son came out, my wife came out, Adam came out. Uh, Jeremy and his three kids were all out here. Uh, it's minus 23 or 22, but uh, full sun. And it's actually warm in the sun, taking bits off. And uh, we're looking for some splake. That's a cross between a brook trout and a lake trout. I and mean, we're using some minnows. Coming in the picture, buddy. There's Holins here. And uh, are you gonna tell me what you did with your skunk? Oh, fish. Adam just got a bite. Gotta go. What's it say? We were too busy squawking. Missed the bite? Yeah. The whole one's already got one on the board. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm not skunked. Any bites? Uh -uh. No bites. What happened to the skunk skull? Did you trade it? You still have it. Still have I, it? Are you gonna trade it? I don't know where it is. You don't know where it is? <laughs> oh man, all that work. You better find it. What are you doing there, buddy? Good. What are you doing? Scooping out the ice. Oh, the ice chunk? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna do all the holes? Uh, not all of them. Yeah, why don't I you do all of them all? Those we, two. we need them all. Oh, you're gonna do them all though? Yeah. Good work, buddy. You gotta watch you don't step in these, right? They're big. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty cold. You look like an Eskimo? Mm hmm. Feel like an Eskimo? Uh, nope, my toes are frozen. Are you warm like an Eskimo? No. But the rest of me is good. The rest of you, you except for your toes? My toes are frozen, yeah. yeah. Well, it's only minus 22. Yeah, it's good. Celsius. Mm hmm. Deep here. Okay, that's the bottom. And this is how mine works. Mine will go. Somebody help me! There's a fish. Yeah, I'll set it for you. You're gonna reel up. Okay, ready? Okay, go. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. It's Oh, I feel something. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. There we go. One on the board. <laughs> you waiting for your first bite still? Yeah. Yeah. Any bites yet? No. No. So we got a fire going back there, so we're just gonna clean this guy up real quick. Pretty easy, we can roast some hole on the stick. It's pretty much as fresh as they come. So all we're gonna do is take the guts out, 
take the gills out and we'll throw them on the fire. You going to the fire? Get some pepperettes? Where'd that skunk go? <laughs> I'm gonna keep bugging her. All right, we'll chum the, actually we might keep that. We might eat that. There we go, good enough. Quick rinse. Fresh fish. Oh, that's the worst part. Washing your hands in the frozen cold water. Whew. Oh. But you don't want to put fish slime in your gloves. Alright, so we got ourselves a little stick here. We're going to sharpen it up to a point like that with the knife. Okay, and we're gonna take the fish, we're gonna shove the fish up the stick. You wanna cook over the fire? Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. You wanna do that? Just like that. Okay, let's go to the fire. Here you go. We're gonna take our trout, and we're gonna just thread it up through the back. So kind of going into the muscle here, the bottom. Just like so. Yeah, the inside exposed. That. And we have some spice here. The WB spice. I'm just gonna put that on there. So rub it all in. And we'll cook this over the fire. You hiding? What are you roasting? Marshmallows? Uh -huh. Oh, I got a triple on there. Nice. You just have to watch the fish goobers don't get on it. <laughs> the hard part. Oh, yeah. There's a hard part in it. Oh, a piece of gill plate. Oh, that's good. What do you think, buddy? Fresh fish right out of the lake. Good? Yeah. I found one bone. Found a bone? Yeah. That's not surprising. There you go. Simple, easy way to cook trout. Just like that. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for trying it. Just look at that. Beautiful meat. The thing about when you cook like this is you don't You don't want to overcook it because if you do and all those little bones will stay stuck in the rib cage there's a few here so you just pull those out before you eat just pull those little ribs out our trout fishing is going to be slow today because it's sunny it's always slower when it's sunny out there you go, buy fresh fish right out of the lake. Doesn't get any more fresh than that. Catch it, cook it. Cheers, guys. Get out there and give it a shot. Bring your family along, too. It's lots of fun. Don't let the cold temperatures scare you off. Just make sure they're well dressed. Get yourself a good fire going. Make sure you take care of them first. And then any fishing you get in, any meals you get in, bonus. There you go. I'm gonna pick the rest off here. No waste, guys. A full fish, that's all that's left, just the bone. Okay, get your hands in. Hands ready. Okay. Lost it. No, 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 it's still there, still there. Okay, go, 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 keep going. Straight up the hole. I lost it. Straight up the hole, keep going. It. Came off at the top. 
I've been out doing quite a bit of bow hunting over the, the season and uh, probably about 10, 15 times this year. Didn't manage to get anything, uh, but I dug down in my freezer and I grabbed what I had left from the years, over the years. Uh, I had some going back probably four years ago. Um, just uh, chunk meat, venison chunk. And what I did was I put it all in a big container of water, add some seasoning salt, and I boiled it for probably 20 hours just so that it would really tenderize. I added some uh, olive oil and some butter, but you could add any kind of fat to it. And over time, the uh, venison really tenderized with the salt and uh, it's made a nice stew. And then once, it's, uh, once it was all cooked, I added some potatoes and some carrots. So that's a good way to make use of your leftover venison, even four or five year old stuff. And then you take it out ice fishing. It's a perfect kind of weather to eat it in because it really heats your body up right to the core. It's good, nice and hot. It's really filling too. On this side, this side. Come on this side, this side. You can't this time, sir. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, ready? Get ready? Okay, here we go. Ready? Get down here. Okay, go. Oh, I feel it. Keep I going. It's shaking. I... Straight up the middle of the hole. Put your hands over here. Keep going. Here you go. Yeah! Hey. You got a trout? Yeah. Woo! This one only catches trout. This is a good one. Oh, yeah. The sun right behind you, though, I should move. That's a dandy perch. <laughs> Look at that perch. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> you were right. Another perch. The perch don't belong in here at all. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> non stop. <laughs> <laughs> You guys might laugh at me for catching, you know, these little two inch perch, but it actually takes more skill to catch these guys than a two pound trout. And they don't belong in this lake. The things we just saw are correct. Cheese. 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 And hamburgers. Good. 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 I'm going to do another little chat here. Um, seems the last chat I did resonated with a lot of people. So I wanted to share some of the reader comments, uh, subscriber comments, and uh, I want to add a little bit more to the puzzle so we can get a full picture. Um, the last talk on uh, masculinity and the squirrel hunt, 
seemed to really touch a nerve with people and the discussion section is really livened up. So it seems like we're misunderstood as, uh, as, uh, as men and uh, our boys are misunderstood. And I do want to speak to the girls that are watching as well because it's not because I'm talking to boys, it doesn't mean I'm excluding you. It just means I'm giving men and boys a voice. And it's pretty rare in our time to give boys a voice. Um, we've taken their voice away from them and we've, we've given it to girls for the last 20 so years. And it's coming full circle, so it's something we need to deal with. First, I want to do a shout out. Uh, Mountain Boys, username Mountain Boys. He says, the Wooded Beardsman, I love your channel. Can you give me a shout out, please? Trying to get 100 subs, by the way, amazing channel. And he writes again, I will share your channel out on Facebook. I will add it to my playlist. He says, I'll try my best to get out more, trying to get subs. I can get a GoPro instead of my phone. I want to make a channel about survival, fishing, hunting, and trapping. I'm only 15, but I love to fish and trap. So I'm going to get back full circle on your comment, and I'm going to give you some advice, but I will do your shout out, and I did. So that's my part. Your part is coming up next. A couple other comments. Slay the mage, mage boy. Uh, I've first of first bit of you guys I've seen amazing. I'm a 14 year old boy trying to my best to be a good hunter fisherman. I love these videos. I subscribed. Thank you. Uh, Ty Syracuse. This needs to be fixed. I'm also 15. I live in Arizona, and it's hilarious the looks I get with fishing poles sticking out of my backpack alongside the main, the main roads of my city. Ignore the looks. Keep going, brother. You're doing exactly right. Scott Medley, way to go. Love the video. Love all your vids. Please keep going. Don't let complete ignorant and quite frankly, pathetic lazy people that seem to forget that we aren't far off the area we had that we once had to go and collect our dinner. P.S. Give me a shout out because I want everyone to know I'm right beside you all the way, brother. Scott Medley. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Justin Chase. This is a long one, so bear with me. The world needs more men like you, sir. I'm happy I found this channel. I grew up in the country. I had parents that were very outdoorsy, but my school and teachers feminized me and said, and sad to say, it worked. It does work. After a long time, we wear our, boy, we wear our boys out and we destroy them. It took years to undo everything that I was taught and to change my behavior to what, was, what it was meant to be. I went through so many relationships, couldn't keep a girl because I was always the nice guy the pretty boy. One day around the age of 24, I decided that enough was enough. I decided I was going to stop letting people walk all over me. I started speaking up for myself as awkward as it was and I was going to make myself something of myself. I am now at the age of 28, took him four years, and I am so happy at what I have become. But there is so much I have to learn and relearn. The one thing I learned from this video is that the best way for me to become what I was biologically meant to be is to get my gun and get back outdoors. Thank you again for this video and God bless you, sir. Subscribed. Justin Chase, thank you for the very um, candid uh, message. And that's the kind of people that I'm trying to reach with these videos. If you guys don't do it, nobody will. You know, I'm, I'm uh, turning 40 this year and I'm gonna hand the world over to you boys and you boys are gonna be responsible for taking care of what happens the next generation. Steve Edwards writes, so honest and true. I have three boys that will be watching this video. They love hunting and fishing as much as I do and I love your channel. I have seen someone nail it like you have in this video. Perfect. Thanks for sharing your life and adventures with us. You're welcome. That was Steve, Stephen Edwards. All right. So the message I want to address today is I want you to make maximum use of what you have right now, regardless of anything else that's, that's happening. So what I mean by this is, if you're 70 years old, I want you to do what you're capable of doing as a seven year old. If you're 12 years old, I want you to do the same. If you're eight years old, same. I want you to do what you can do right now. So if you're an eight year old and you're on your iPad all day, you are not doing what you're maximally capable of doing. Okay? I want you to take some independence in your life. I want you to get stuff done for yourself. I don't want you to waste your youth and good health watching me or anybody else do something on the computer. Internet, iPad, TV, 
just stop. stop. Start living your life. You will become old like me and older like some of the other viewers and you may become incapable of doing anything physically with your body anymore. You may get a chronic illness. You may uh, be, become injured or incapacitated. You may develop chronic pain. You may get cancer. I mean, these are all pretty harsh scenarios. But what's eventually going to happen is your body will become so old and decrepit, you won't be able to do it anymore. And you may wish one day that you did. You may become old. In the best case scenario, you will become old. In the best case scenario, you will be able to look back on your life and say, I'm done. I've done it. I'm okay if I die because I've done all the things I want to do in my life. And that's a natural existence. That's a normal natural existence. But locking yourself up behind a screen and not doing what your body is capable of doing right now is no service to yourself. Okay, I'm not saying you might get hit by a bus and have regrets because people who are dead can't have regrets. So you won't have regrets after you're dead. But you can extract maximum pleasure and enjoyment from the planet right now while you're still alive. And the people that are watching these videos and complaining, you're not using maximum use of your time. I mean, there's an infinitesimally large database of videos you can watch and you're watching something that pisses you off. Why are you wasting your life like that? Are you nuts? Like, seriously, it blows my mind that people would waste their time watching something that pisses them off. It totally blows my mind. Okay, so that, that's saying that, spend your time doing it. I'm not saying you can't watch YouTube videos. I'm not saying you can't watch TV. Everybody needs a break. But I'm saying if that's what you do, that's your occupation, your hobby, you're playing video games, you're wasting it, man. You're wasting it. There's some old people who are so decrepit that they can't get out and do anything anymore and they're pissed off at you because you're wasting your life. There's other people with chronic illnesses, they're looking at you on an iPad and like, dude, yeah, there's a little bit of traffic here. They're like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? I've implemented a 30 minute maximum uh, time for my son to be on an iPad per day. He gets, uh, he plays Roblox. And a lot of kids play Roblox too. 30 minutes. We don't always, are not always successful adhering to that, but it's our fault if we don't. And the reason we fail at it is because we have a hard time matching him up with friends to play with. If he has friends to play with, go out and explore. As an eight-year-old, he's having a blast. His hands are literally shaking in excitement. It's so amazing to walk. And had a card on that. Memory card there, just, just filled up. So where was I talking about what you should do with your life? Like I'm qualified. Okay, so I wanna come full circle back to Mountain Boys. You're 15 years old, bud. Okay, you asked me for a favor, you wanted a shout out. I gave you your shout out. You want 100 subs, but why do you want 100 subs? Like, why do you think you deserve 100 subs? It's an honest question. Do you think you should just get stuff for free? And I'm not being mean, but I tell my son the same exact thing. If you want something in life, you gotta go get it for yourself. There's nobody, when you turn into a man, there's nobody who's just gonna give you stuff. You know, they might be nice to you. They're probably gonna give you some advice because that's free. You know, everybody's got an opinion but there's nobody who's just gonna give you stuff just because you exist. The world's a little different if you're a girl and we tell our girls just to be who they are and things are gonna work out for them and then be safe. But for boys, you gotta be, it's a whole new level. It's a whole new game for you guys that you're not told. You have to go out and take it. And we talked about this in the squirrel video a little bit, but if you don't go out and take it, nobody's gonna give stuff to you. That's the God awful truth, buddy. So go out and work for it. You need to build up your content. If this is what you want to do, I would not advise you start a YouTube channel and um, you know, as, as something that would be interesting for your life to do. I mean, it will be challenging, but I don't think you're necessarily going to be successful doing it. You can throw your hat in the ring and see how you do. But uh, if you're starting off by saying, what can I take rather than what can I give? You're starting off on the wrong foot and maybe you don't have what it takes. And uh, maybe you can go out and prove me wrong like I did in my life. You know, my guidance counselor told me I would never make it. He said, you can apply to the university of your choice that I went to, same one, but you're not going to get in. I said, F that. I walked out and I said, F that. And I did everything it took to get there. They said, well, I can only, I can only, I had to take three courses, a minimum of three courses 
rather than uh, I think the four or five. And I said, no, I'm going to take two because I already had enough credits to go to university. I just needed to improve them. So I dropped everything, took calculus and one other course. And they said, you have to take a minimum of three. I said, fine, put me in a bird course. Do you know what I did in the bird course? I studied for calculus. That's what I did. And I disrupted the class, apparently, because I was busy doing something else, not focusing on the lesson. So I had my head down, I was doing my calculus problems, I was working on that because that's what I needed to get done. Somebody told me I couldn't do it. So I did the exact opposite and I did it. Now, I don't suggest that that guy did it on purpose, but maybe I am. So if you want to make something yourself, you have to do it yourself, buddy. Nobody in life's going to give you stuff. So boys, if you're out there, you have to separate yourself from the crowd. You have to take risks. And not everybody's going to be rewarded by those risks. There's some of us that are going to be successful and some of us are going to completely fail and waste their time. But if you do that, you know, 10, 15, 20 times in your life, you're successful once, that's all that matters. You know, maybe you want to get one viral video. So you work for 20 years and you keep throwing your hat in the ring. Eventually, you might just get that one viral video. But to make a viral channel is something completely different because you got to hit that every single week. Now, I don't suggest that I'm going to do it with this video exactly. But, you know, I'm here to connect with you guys. I really do care about you. I care about the boys out there. And I think that you know somebody needs to speak for them so i'm going to do it i've been doing it in my regular day life uh with my hockey players and my son uh, my hockey team i should say and the results are clear they're benefiting from it immensely because i'm telling them how exactly how the world works boys want their problems solved girls want to be heard and uh, they want to know that they're you know cared for and uh, their feelings are dealt with but boys want solutions so when you talk to a boy give him solutions to his problems and he's going to love you you know, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna encourage him to talk, <clears throat> make sure that you're prepared to offer him solutions to his problems and make his problems go away. Otherwise, he's gonna feel like it's a waste of time. That's exactly how boys are programmed. They're problem solvers. So boys generally aren't open with their feelings, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's because they're working on their problems. They're stoic. They deal with their problems. They're reticent. So think about that. Let boys not be sharing their feelings. Don't don't force them to share their feelings. But you know, if they talk to you, listen, and then try to help them, try to help them fix their problems. And if you do fix their problems, they're going to come back. But usually they're pretty good at fi figuring it out for themselves. So just let them, let them think, don't force them through it. Okay, so how do boys get started? You guys have asked this over and over again, what should I do? Go fishing. Get yourself a, a pole, a real basic pole, some fishing lines, some hooks and gear, just go fishing. <clears throat> After that, I would suggest that you um, cook your fish, clean cook your fish. You know, at the start, you may want to just release them. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people are not going to get the opportunity to hunt because it's something that you, re you need a little bit of guidance to do it. But once you get into your 20s, you should be able to figure it out yourself. There's plenty of online forums that you can talk to and discuss this with people. So that's how I would start if I were you. Uh, to all the girls. Okay, so the girls wanted a message. You wanted to know if I thought it was okay for you guys to go out and do this stuff. Of course. I mean, it goes without saying. You guys have been told this your entire lives. You guys can do everything that boys can do better. I might disagree with that, but... I don't think you should stop doing it. If it's something that you love, go out and do it. You know, I don't expect that the vast majority of girls are gonna to wanna to go out and kill a hare and feed it to the family. But if that's what you do, then why would I stop you? And why would you listen to anybody? And why do you need permission from somebody? So I'm not saying that you can't do it. In fact, I'm saying that if you love doing it, you should do it. You should do anything that you that's legal, that doesn't hurt and infringe on other people's rights that you find to be enjoyable. Go for it, do it, please. So, yes, and I think you should go with your dads. I think you should be around your dads to know what dads do, and then you'll make a decision uh, when you decide on a husband to pick one that's a good one, rather than one that's, uh, you know, badass. You know, you don't need to pick up a, a, a guy just because he's uh, got rough around the edges and all oh, that's pretty cool and fun and stuff, but you should, got, you, you should find a guy with an edge, but you should find a guy who, um, you know, uses that edge for uh, productive activities, not destructive activities. You know, find a guy who, you know, who doesn't get pushed around, you know, doesn't get told what to do, but then uses his time to create and, and build and uh, provide rather than destroy things. You know, you know what I'm talking about, the, you know, the bad boy who's into drugs and alcohol and partying. I mean, yeah, okay, we did all do that when we were teenagers, but if that's the only thing that he has to offer, then uh, you might want to consider walking away. And maybe you got to take somebody who's not as good looking. Think about it, guys. You know, 
you think with your uh, ovaries you're gonna get yourself in trouble just like a man's gonna get himself in trouble think if there's just this you know what I mean so another reader comment here I want to go through here there's a couple more uh, Jack Watson writes the Witted Beardsman you know what I'm going to I'm gonna go for it starting from stuff I never thought I'd try it's a new year after all and the world is my oyster yeah it is buddy you do whatever you want man get out there and do it please go and do it American Outdoors writes I agree with everything Every word you said as well. I'm only 12 years old and I'm going to keep hunting. Never stop fishing and keep providing as well. You are going to make a good catch for a girl one day. It's not going to happen right away. Just keep your head down and keep going forward. Eventually a girl is going to notice what you're doing. Don't pursue a girl. Let them pursue you. Have something to offer them. Go out and be productive and do interesting and exciting things that are good for the world and a girl is going to take notice of that and then you take that girl that's the best way to pick a girlfriend if you're tripping over yourself of the most beautiful woman you see all the time and she continuously ignores you it's because you are not noticeable you're not noteworthy go out and be noteworthy do something different and out of the ordinary from the rest of these jokers out here who have nothing to offer. If you are that guy, girls are gonna notice way before you notice them and they'll be clamoring all over you. Men need to be special. You guys need to have your unique features, your unique edge. You have to develop that for yourself. And it takes knowing who you are with the conviction of carrying it through. So go out there and do what it takes to be different from everybody else in a way that makes you unique and therefore special. And you will be worthy of pursuit. So this is the final one. Ginger Snap writes, The Witted Beardsman, I vote speak up. I was raised in a, as my husband calls it, bunny hugger, bambi kisser family. We had a very negative and warped worldview of hunters. Natural predators, prey, balances, conservation, and yes, masculinity too, I'm not surprised. It wasn't until I met my own bearded outdoorsman that my very perspective completely changed. We have two, soon to be three sons of our own now. Sometimes that's what it takes just to be around boys and men. I, I want to raise my boys to be proud of their masculinity. I want to be providers, hunters, gatherers, real men that God intends them to be. I know their dad will do their very best he can to ensure this, but it helps to have others that can stand with him and set an example. I like that you can show the kiddos your videos and talk to them about hunting and harvesting responsibly and encourage them not to be ashamed of that way of life. It helps us reinforce what we are teaching them, so please keep up the conversation. I never, <laughs> never thought I'd cry on camera. Ah. Guys. That's what we need. We've all been through the system. We've been pushed to the brink. Maybe I'm being too dramatic here, but that it just touched me, okay? As much as we're men, we're people too. And we need to be understood. You know, we're out doing good things on the planet and you know we don't need to be put up on a pedestal but it's nice to be noticed that we're doing good things so we're, we're not asking for much just back off a little bit and let us do our thing would be really nice and uh, to our significant others our partners you know 
just let us be. I mean, that's what men want more than anything, just to be let be and to do their own thing. So I hope this conversation helps a little bit. I hope you guys get to see, you know, that there's humanity behind what we're doing. And when we go out and we catch and kill something, that we're doing it in order to maintain life that we value. And it's, a, it's sad maybe that that's how the world works and that living beings have to be killed in order for us to live. But that is the reality of this planet. And it, it's a difficult reality to live, to, to live through, to understand. But while we're alive, we have to participate in it, whether directly or indirectly. And I know it comes back to this over and over again, but that's part of what we are as men. And no, we don't all have to express it that way. But we, when we go to a grocery store, we're, we're participating. You know, even vegetarians were participating in that cycle. And we are indirectly taking the lives of animals so that we can live. So, you know, if you're in business, if you're a businessman, you don't have time to go outdoors, you're, you're doing the right thing for your family. And uh, to be vilified on a wide scale like men are today, it's really sad to see, you know, men are not like that. They're not, that's not masculinity, that's toxicity. You know, we could look at what an individual woman does or a, a bunch of women do and vilify the entire gender, but that would be wrong. Not all women are like that. Not all men are like that. So what we need to do is figure out which are the good ones and which are the not good ones. And we need to decide quickly and we need to encourage and enforce the good ones rather than simply vilify the group. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining me guys, and uh, there's more to come. Uh, I have a video coming up with my wife to help solidify some of these ideas, and I know I'll probably try to make this short again, but there it is guys. Threw it out there for the world to see. So I hope you guys uh, took something from this, and I hope you apply it to your own life. If you're a mother, if you're a teenage girl, if you're um, a grandmother and you have grandsons, and if you're a boy, if you're a man, then there's a message in there for everybody, guys. And uh, I hope you guys use it for good. Thanks for listening.